All reactor core safeguards are now non-functional. Please prepare for reactor core meltdown. Okay, look, I wasn't going to mention this to you, but I'm in pretty hot water here. How are you doing down there? You still holding on? The reserve power ran out, so of course the whole relaxation center stops waking up the bloody test subjects. Hold on, this is a bit tricky. And of course, nobody tells me anything. No, why should you tell me anything? Why should I be kept informed? You know, about the life functions of the 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of. Why? It's close. Can you see? Am I going to make it through? I've got enough space. Uh, just, just got to get through here. Okay, I just got to concentrate. And whose fault do you think it's going to be when the management comes down here and finds 10,000 flipping vegetables? Alright, see, now I hear that one. I hear that one. Okay, listen, we should get our story straight, all right? If anyone asks, and no one's going to ask, don't worry, but if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive, all right? Not dead. Okay, almost there. On the other side of that wall is one of the old testing tracks. There's a piece of equipment in there that we're going to need to get out of here. I, I think this is a docking station. Get ready. news, that is not a docking station. So there's one mystery solved. Uh, I'm going to attempt a manual override on this wall. Could get a bit technical. Hold on. Almost there. Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes. Not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Seriously, do hold on this time. There we go. Now I'll be honest, you are probably in no fit state to run... The container ride destruction sequence provided some unique but, um, technical challenges. The dynamics you experience are actually computed as two separate but nested simulations. The first is a core scale simulation designed as a stress element analysis pass. This pass computes the overall gross motion of the container itself and computes the collisions and breakpoints based on path keyframe data and a network of constraints. As the container bumps and crashes along, the constraints start breaking and the room progressively starts to come apart. There are over 300 rigid bodies and 900 constraints in this rig, all individually configured for properties like tensile, friction and collision response. The core simulation portrayed gross motion that captured the main dynamics of the ride, but not the fine details. The product of the core simulation was then used to deform spline-based surfaces representing the container geometry, which in turn were parents to fine debris anchored as rigid bodies. As the surface deformations increase, anchors are broken and the fine debris rigid bodies are released into the simulation. The fine simulation also includes the interior furniture and the model detailing. The two simulations were then connected using cache data and were driven together by a series of scripts. Due to the computational complexities of having two nested simulations, we had to come up with some solutions to some interesting mathematical problems. One problem was that the nested nature of the simulations resulted in some instability in the fine debris calculations due to floating point computational limits. The solution employed for this was to compute the fine debris on a stage where the root transform of the course simulation was essentially cancelled out and stored for later use. This allowed us to more accurately detect the fine interactions between the debris and the environment. Post simulation the root transform position and inertia were reapplied to the details. We solved the problem of trying to compute the player within this highly dynamic environment by putting them in a virtual room that has all the base shapes of the rendered container, but is simply used to compute player navigation. It's hidden somewhere else in the map. The viewpoint of the player is then parented to the course simulation transform, resulting in the final rendered frame. At the end of the ride, the player is teleported into the actual game space. The simulations were iterative, enabling us to sculpt the dynamics in parallel with gameplay design. In the final product there are over 1200 rigid bodies, 900 constraints and 1000 joints. With all the iterations combined, the actual runtime spent computing the simulation was 92.4875 days. <laughs>